Hey, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Abd Rahman Jamal. Today, me and my group members, uh, Abd Rahman Abu Zaid, Ahmed Shaban, Mark George, Hamad El Laysi, and Ruben Adham, we will be talking about our thesis project, which is building a digital twin uh, prototype for an automated guided vehicle. And this project is a collaboration with Siemens Company under the supervision of Dr. Muhammad Abd Salam and Dr. Tamer Al Bot. Okay, here is our outline. I'll go through it quickly for the sake of time. First, we will be introducing our uh, project. Then we'll, uh, we will dive deeply into our provided architecture and results. Then we'll be talking about our future work and uh, playing a recorded demo. Okay, now before talking about our project, uh, we must define those terms to, uh, to know our, our project well. The first one, which is digital twin. Digital twin is simply a virtual or a digital version of a physical asset or a process. It is often used throughout the product life cycle to optimize, simulate, and predict the product and production, production system before investing in a real prototype. It works using multi-physics simulations, data analytics, and machine learning capabilities to demonstrate the impact of the environmental conditions uh, on the product itself and eliminating the need for a real uh, or physical prototype. And now for the automated guided vehicle, it is simply a material handling systems or load carrier robots that travels autonomously and it is often used uh, to transport heavy materials in warehouses and distribution centers. And now for Industry 4.0, since now the first wave of the industrial revolution is upon us, uh, it is now characterized by integrating uh, the new advanced technologies into the manufacturing industry. Those technologies like simulations, artificial intelligence, internet of things, and etc. They are used to optimize the production processes and enable more efficient and interconnected uh, manufacturing ecosystem. And since now we are in industry 4.0, the concept of digital twins is very important since they uh, enable manufacturers to gain a deeper understanding of the behavior of their products and predict potential issues before they uh, happen. So they provide or achieve greater levels of efficiency and productivity. And now Ahmad Chaban will be talking about our activation. Okay, so now I'd like to talk to you about our motivation for this project. But to do so, I first must introduce the concept of the industrial metaverse. Uh, the industrial metaverse is a digital world that uh, virtually represents different parts of a factory, including machines and processes. It uh, can simulate factories before they're even constructed and allows designers to run tests and what if scenarios to uh, come up with optimal designs for the factory. It allows for faster, cheaper, and more thorough design process as you can run thousands of scenarios in one day before, uh, uh, before the factory is even constructed. However, the industrial metaphors requires that every aspect of the, of the factory is actively represented uh, in the digital world. This, of course, includes AGVs, which, as we've discussed, is becoming more and more common in factories nowadays. Uh, thus, we took it upon ourselves to create a generic digital twin architecture based uh, for an automated guided vehicle uh, that is based on a Dockerized private cloud and to be used in Industry 4.0 applications. So uh, while comparing and contrasting between the research done in the field of digital twins, we found that most papers discuss the importance of using digital twins in the manufacturing industry. Uh, so we found that lots of paper discussed the uh, lots of papers uh, discussed the importance of digital twins, as uh, my colleague Abdurrahman just mentioned. The papers explain how digital twins provide many benefits for controlling the environment and developing efficiency, uh, and also uh, it's important in the development stage in reducing cost, energy, and time. However, uh, the main challenge faced in this field is that most digital twins are application specific. So they are rarely reused. Uh, and to help resolve this issue, an uh, article that was actually published in uh, the Applied Science Journal, it's called Generic Digital Twin Architecture for Industrial Energy Systems. Uh, this article provided a generic framework for digital twins. Uh, this framework uses industry standards to create uh, digital twins for different asset manufacturing processes. Um, which obviously opens the door for uh, standard uh, for standard industry uh, for standard interfaces for digital twins that increase their flexibility. Uh, and this actually guided us in proposing a new architecture for a generic digital twin uh, for automatic guided vehicles. Um, so then we started looking into the building process of the digital twin and the challenges we might face during this stage. And we found a relevant paper 
called Addressing Time Discrepancy Between Digital and Physical Twins. And it was actually just released uh, this March. Uh, this paper talks about how the physical asset and digital twins must be synced for uh, correct data transmission. Uh, the paper also outlines the importance uh, of uh, the accurate timing of data when digital twins are used to provide feedback for physical assets. And the paper actually gave an illustrative example for this issue by uh, providing the scenario where digital twins are used to warn physical assets of obstacles ahead. Um, and um, the results of uh, these examples were that any delay in receiving the public, uh, the, the warning signal by the physical assets resulted in not being able to avoid the obstacle. Uh, so actually this paper highlights the need to find an approach to deal with the delays between the physical asset and the digital twin. And uh, due to this uh, issue sensitivity that was highlighted by this paper, we're proposing uh, an architecture resulting in lower latencies between the physical asset and the digital twin for safer navigations for the automated guided vehicles. So after our research in the field of digital twins, we came to the conclusion that the literature lacks um, any studies on the usage of a decorized private cloud in uh, building the digital twin. And it also lacks any comparative studies uh, on the usage of public versus private cloud in digital twins. So uh, our aim is to provide such a comparative study while also uh, giving a generic architecture for uh, a digital twin for automatic guided vehicles, ROS based uh, systems, as we're going to show in the next section of our presentation. Okay, so before giving you a general overview of what our project aims to achieve, we first want to reiterate once more what our main goal is. Our main goal is to develop a generic architecture that is suitable for various industrial applications that reaps the rewards of the fourth industrial revolution by utilizing digital twins. To be able to do that, we first need to have a virtual asset that faithfully represents its physical counterpart. Hence, the first step is to get an actual physical asset. The physical asset we use for our project is the Turtle Bot 3, and we modeled a virtual asset to match it on the Gazebo simulation software. So this is the first step complete. The second step is to develop a dashboard that can monitor the performance of both assets and ensure their cohesion. This dashboard includes live stream for both assets, AI services, and collects data that we can aggregate later to compare their performance. The final and the most important part of our project is selecting a suitable cloud architecture that we can host our digital twin application on. This is very important, and as mentioned earlier, is lacking in the literature, which is why we put in the extra effort to fill that gap and find the most suitable architecture and document our findings in a research paper. And now, Lacey will move on to deep dive the architecture. Okay, so this diagram uh, illustrates our main system components that I'll be going through uh, one by one. The Gazebo Simulator, the Amy Simpson Center Functional Mockup Unit, the dashboard, uh, the physical asset itself, and they're all uh, connected through the Composition and Simulation Interconnect Fabric. Uh, the Gazebo Simulator is an open source robotics uh, simulator that is used for simulating the mechanics and kinematics of the of robots in 3D environments and also allows for importing uh, real life maps. So in our case, uh, we've used the TurtleBot 3 LiDAR uh, to scan thesis one lab and have used the uh, Blender, which is a software for uh, projecting 2D maps into 3D maps into uh, and then imported this uh, a map scan into the gazebo simulator as shown in the figure. The second component is a two-wheel uh, AGV functional mock-up unit. Uh, the FMU is mainly responsible for representing the underlying mechanics of the physical asset while abiding to the FMI standard, which is an open source standard for exchanging uh, dynamical simulation models between different tools in a standardized format, allowing for simulating different parts from different vendors in the same manner making it a perfect fit for our uh, proposed uh, generic digital twin architecture. Then we have the interconnect fabric, which is composed mainly of the robot operating system and uh, socket IO. The robot operating system is an, open, is an open source framework for building robot software. ROS provides a set of libraries, tools, and conventions that simplify the development of robotic applications. It's mainly composed of three components, the ROS master, the ROS nodes, and the ROS topics. 
So simply how it works, whenever a Rust node is brought up, it notifies the Rust master with the nodes that it will be publishing and subscribing to. And the Rust master is mainly responsible for orchestrating the communication between different Rust nodes. And now we move to a general uh, architecture diagram. We can see at the top level, a dockerized private cloud running different services, uh, a middleware layer mainly for marshalling the data and abstracting the communication with the cloud. And the last layer is uh, hardware specific. An important design, design uh, decision we took is to operate each instance on its own, uh, with its own ROS master due to the following reasons. Uh, by design, a ROS master resides uh, on a ROS subsystem, and so we want to avoid the dependability of one instance on the other to achieve an important uh, distributed system scheme principle, which is uh, fault tolerance and uh, failure transparency, as well as giving the freedom for the user to withdraw any of the instances at any time without affecting the other, uh, the other uh, instance. And from a software engineering uh, principle, each system component shall have a well-defined uh, role. And since the role of the ROS master is to orchestrate the communication between certain ROS nodes, uh, certain ROS nodes, and there's no direct communication between the ROS nodes running on the physical twin and the digital twin, uh, we, we've decided to keep, uh, to have uh, an independent ROS master for each uh, instance. Now, this is uh, to further elaborate on the architecture. We'll be taking the actuation service as an example. So, for the digital twin, an actuation command is uh, emitted from the dashboard uh, by the aid of socket uh, IO. As you can see, the dashboard uh, is a web server, and the middleware layer in this case is a web client. And at the same time, it runs simultaneously as a ROS node. This node then marshals the data and publishes to the control ROS topic. The actuation uh, ROS node then executes a callback function upon receiving the actuation command on this topic it subscribes to and acts as an uh, as an fmu master for the functional mockup unit that represents the mechanical aspect of the agv and once the simulation completes it then feeds the output to the gazebo simulator through its python apis to update the robot position in the simulation while in a similar manner its uh, physical twin uh, operates in a in a similar fashion, except for the lowest layer, which is which publishes the uh, commands to the dynamic cell motor on the AGV. And now, uh, my colleague uh, Ahmad Chaban and Mark George will be uh, will be uh, going through the comparative studies we've conducted to uh, prove the superiority of the private cloud over the public. Okay, so uh, our architecture for digital twin based on a private cloud is uh, a new one. So we decided to uh, validate it through a few comparative tests that we've done. Uh, the first one is a comparative study on the sensory data put record latency of our uh, private cloud compared to AWS. AWS stands for Amazon Web Services, which is a very popular uh, public cloud server that's used in many applications, including digital twins. Uh, the goal of this uh, study is to support the validity of our private cloud architecture, as Lacey has just mentioned, and to keep the comparison as fair as possible. We use the exact same architecture we've been discussing, just uh, replacing the private cloud with AWS. So for the results, our private cloud performed very well with the very low latency at 9.6 milliseconds average, and there's also very consistent latency, as you can see in the graph. However, for AWS, it was a lot higher with the 52.7 milliseconds average latency and the inconsistency going as low as 10, 10 milliseconds and as high as 165 milliseconds. As Ravan has already said in the related work section, uh, latency, low latency and consistency in latency are both very important in uh, distributed applications. So these prove the superiority of our private cloud compared to public cloud in the application. Uh, so another research direction we have explored is uh, undergoing a comparative analysis of AI services uh, when residing on cloud on and on edge, uh, which is for our case, the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so for our use case, which is the automated guided vehicle, we need an object detection model in order to detect the obstacles to provide the safe navigation for the turtle bot. Uh, so for this reason, we use the mobile net version one, which is a pre-trained model. 
uh, based on the convolutional neural network architecture. Uh, it's designed to run efficiently in, in mobile computing devices such as um, uh, embedded systems and smartphones. Uh, it's widely used in computer vision applications such as uh, face recognition, uh, object uh, detection, and image classification. Uh, it is trained on the ImageNet data set, which contains over 1.2 million images in the training uh, data set with, uh, with 1,000 different classes. Uh, in order to test our proposed architecture, we have compressed the, the mobile net version one using TensorFlow Lite, which applies a series of optimization on the model, uh, such as booning and weight sharing, uh, in order to reduce the size of the model without affecting the, its accuracy. And we have tested it on three different platforms, which are the Raspberry Pi, the private cloud, and the public cloud, uh, which have the following specs. For the memory, the Raspberry Pi has a RAM of one gigabyte. For the private cloud, it has a RAM of 64 gigabyte. For the public cloud, it has a RAM of 16 gigabyte. For the CPU, the edge computing runs a Broadcom Cortex A53. For the private cloud, it, uh, it runs an Intel Core i9. For the public cloud, it uses the vCPU for uh, for this uh, for this problem, the evaluation matrix will be the inference time, uh, which is the time uh, the model takes to process the image and produce an enclosing box along with the label, uh, in addition to the image transmission time from the AGV to the cloud. Uh, so looking at the results, the public cloud uh, had a, an inference time of around 1,500. Uh, while for the, par uh, for the private cloud, it had an inference of 150. Uh, which is uh, 10 times faster due to the latency associated with uh, publishing the uh, images to the cloud. Uh, while the, on the other hand, uh, it's expected to have the edge computing uh, having the lowest latency uh, because all of the processing is, is done locally and it incurs no uh, transmission time. Uh, but due to the um, uh, limited computing power as, uh, as shown uh, earlier in the specs, uh, it was three times slower than our proposed architecture. So these results uh, reaffirms the superiority of our, of our proposed architecture when compared to other architectures. Okay, so uh, the, uh, the last uh, analysis we conducted was a sensory data trend analysis. And this one was a bit more fundamental as its goal was to confirm the validity of our digital twin architecture as an analogy for the physical AGV or an accurate representation of it. So first, must be noted that digital twins are not expected to follow their physical counterparts perfectly. In fact, it'd be very difficult to do so since there's a lot of uh, variables that are in real life that are not accounted for in simulations, such as ground friction, for example. Thus, it's sufficient for the digital twin to follow the same trend as the physical asset. So uh, to conduct our study, we graph the position represented by the Euclidean distance from the starting point versus time, as well as the speed versus time of both the digital twin and the physical twin. The graphs above show a very nice trend, but to put this into numbers, we use the mean difference percentage, which you can think of as basically a percentage of how much the digital twin deviates from the physical one. For position, the deviation was 6.46%, and for the speed, it was 4.1%. These numbers are very much within margin of error and prove that our digital twin is indeed analogous to the physical AGV. To conclude the comparison that we made between the public and the private cloud architectures, we want to summarize the benefits and drawbacks that we found when using each uh, architecture. So with AWS at the public cloud, we have the pros of having a very reliable platform that offers great quality of service. It has tools and advanced tools and services that are fully managed by AWS, like CloudWatch, Metrics, Kinesis, and the Bodo3 software development kit that allows us to interact with these uh, services. So this provides us with well-maintained software that has great documentation, which offers a smoother troubleshooting experience if any issues occur. And this is obviously because AWS has access to great manpower and financial resources. So any implementation we do of similar services will definitely be inferior to those provided by AWS. But on the other hand, if we use our Dockerized private cloud, we can drastically reduce the latency and we have greater security and privacy of data since no data leaves the premises whatsoever. It is also more, more cost effective because we, have, we don't have to incur any costs provided that the machines are available. And we have the ability to utilize a lot of open source tools like 
Docker Hub, which has a lot of ready-made images for services like Apache Web Server, MySQL databases, and more. And we can deploy all of them easily using a single .yaml file using the Docker Compose tool. So in conclusion, we think that the Dockerized private cloud is definitely better for our, uh, for our specific application. And it could be further improved if a large company provides an open source image of the services that we provide, uh, which offers services that, that could be comparable to AWS. But for now, uh, the private cloud is the way to go. So now we come to our empowerment outcome for this project, which is a research paper. Uh, our research paper includes the description of a digital art twin architecture that we've been talking about throughout this presentation, uh, as well as the documentation of the development process that we went through. It also includes the trend analysis that we mentioned, as well as the comparative studies, both the public versus private cloud latency and the cloud AI versus edge AI. Uh, our paper has actually been done for quite a while now because we've already presented it in the RCC conference in AOC and have submitted our paper to the IEEE Smart World Congress in the UK. And this morning at 5.33 a.m., an email came in with the good news that our paper has been accepted to the IEEE World Congress. And we will hopefully be presenting our work in August 2023. And of course, you can see the reviews that were given to us on the screen. Uh, okay, and for future works, as my colleague Ahmed Shaban said, we face some problems regarding the synchronization between the digital twin and its physical uh, counterpart due to many factors, like, for example, the network delays, uh, the temporary network drop, and obstacles that could be found in the physical environment and aren't represented in the uh, digital ones, like, for example, as he said, the ground friction. So uh, they result in some discrepancies between both the digital twin and the physical twin. So our developed architecture or our solution until now uh, did not provide a correction mechanism. So we aim uh, to implement a best effort functionality that enables a recovery mechanism to reestablish the synchronization between both uh, the digital twin and the physical twin to achieve what is called as uh, digital shadowing. Uh, we are also planning to implement a hybrid cloud system that works by using both the public and the private cloud, uh, which are managed by a single entity to take both uh, benefits from both of them. Okay, and now we will be playing uh, a recorded demo for our project. Siemens and the American University in Cairo are proud to introduce a digital twin prototype of an automated guided vehicle, the TurtleBot 3. Digital twins are vital in modern industries as they allow for improved performance, increased efficiency, and real-time monitoring of physical systems. They are revolutionizing the way we interact with physical systems, providing us with greater insights and control than ever before. By integrating these tools, we can develop a virtual replica of the physical system that accurately reflects its behavior, allowing for real-time monitoring, analysis, and optimization. The TurtleBot 3 is a small, autonomous robot that can navigate through complex environments. Using advanced simulation technology, we have created a virtual model of the TurtleBot 3 that can be controlled and manipulated in real time. The digital twin is powered by the Gazebo Simulator, which provides a realistic environment for testing and validating the robot's behavior. To control the TurtleBot 3's digital twin, we have developed a user-friendly dashboard that runs on local premises. With the dashboard, users can easily program the robot's movements, set waypoints, and monitor its progress. By enabling the object detection and recognition model on the dashboard, we deliver unparalleled accuracy in identifying a vast range of objects, opening the doors to extraordinary insights. Through rigorous testing, we pushed our proposed architecture to its limits, and the results not only outperforms the competition but also surpasses our expectations in terms of its lightning-fast inference times. The dashboard also offers real-time monitoring of sensory data. This feature serves as a tracking mechanism that allows for identification of anomalies from optimal operational parameters, empowering prompt remedial measures to be taken, if required. In addition to the on-premises dashboard, we are also streaming the TurtleBot 3 sensor data and video stream to AWS Kinesis services. This allows us to compare the performance of the on-premises dashboard with cloud-based solutions. 
We have also integrated a SimCenter Amisim functional mock-up unit to represent the mechanical model of the TurtleBot 3. This allows us to accurately simulate the mechanical behavior of the robot, including its motion, forces, and torques. By combining all previous component, we can create a complete virtual representation of the TurtleBot 3 that can connect, sense, compute, and actuate. This concludes our presentation. Uh, now we're open to questions.